let's uh, start. So uh, the, this time, this, this is not a presentation, it's just a kind of uh, discussion that I encounter a uh, question, a problem during my development of uh, the Bcash. The, the, the problem is uh, how to handle the out of memory in block layer. Uh, should, should I just uh, make the I.O. to wait if the out of memory happens or uh, return a uh, block FTS resources to the BI underscore uh, status. That means the block call will uh, translate into the error code is uh, no mem, no mem. Uh, the, uh, most of the pages will explain what the problem is and we, I, I would like to listen to advice from you. Okay. Uh, the Bcache might be the only block layer model uh, which maintain a huge number of pages to, to, con to, to, to cache the internal B plus tree nodes. Uh, I, will play, I will explain the reason later. And uh, after a long time for the uh, heavy IO pressure, the internal cache may consume a lot of memory and uh, trigger the system out of memory killer. Uh, the discussion focuses on the special and specific case that how to handle out of memory in the block layer cache, B cache. Uh, most of the slide will explain what the OM problem exactly is, then leave time to people to, to discuss and analyze. Latency. Uh, the first, what is Bcache? Uh, the Bcache is a Linux block layer cache. It makes a faster uh, block layer device such as uh, SSD or NVDIMM. We, we can use NVDIMM in the, uh, use the PMAN driver to, to use it like a cache device. Uh, as a cache for more and um, one or more slower hard drive. Uh, here is a virtual, uh, virtual Bcache uh, device. I.O. come in, and uh, if it, it is a random I.O., uh, it will go into SID firstly, and uh, go back to the backend device uh, in the right back thread. Uh, if the Bcache device is not attached to SSD, so the I.O. request will go into the backend device directly. Yeah. Also, uh, the Bcache also support the user to just to use uh, the SSD. Uh, that called a uh, flash only volume. That means uh, people may create a volume, then the, all the I.O. will just hit on the SSD. No I.O. will go back into hard drive. There is no uh, backing device. Uh, this is for, this is designed for uh, distributed file system like uh, Ceph or some other file system. They, they can use this to store their local meta metadata because this kind of data won't go into the backing device. Oh, okay. Uh, the the Bcache uses a B plus tree to index the cached block. That means even the block, the cached block is written into the SSD. Unless it's B key inserted in tr into the internal B tree before that, uh, any read request won't find it. Won't find it is cached on the device. Yeah. Uh, here's the here is the structure of the B key. Uh, we we don't we don't need to care about too much about it. Uh, too much about it. Just uh, if a block is cached on the B cache de uh, on the cache device, a B key is inserted into the B plus tree. If a B key low. Mat matches the requested backend device LBA. And then the pointer here, here, is the LBA address on the caching device for the cached block, like a database. Uh, we check it with the LBA on the backend device. If we find it, we read the LBA of the cache device, read the data from the SSD. Uh, 
So when the read BIO comes, the BIO, the, the, the BIO's BI uh, sector, yeah. BI sector and the lines BI size will be checked into the, uh, into the B plus tree. There are some details that if the lines is more or less than the pair stored in the B tree, uh, we just ignore that. That's not the, the key problem. Uh, the read BIO, the first check, the internal B tree. Here, here is the in memory. Here, the B tree is read in the memory and then check it. If the B tree, the one in the B tree to check is not in memory, just read the B tree node from the SSD and load it into the memory and check it again. And then, if the from the B tree we can find the key, that means the cache is hit. We just read the cache the block from the SSD and then return it to the requester. So here, this part, this part is important. Uh, that means uh, that means the I/O of the B cache metadata. So if the I/O latency of the metadata can be faster, the, the overall I/O latency can be much less. Uh, therefore, uh, B, B cache just maintain the internal cache to keep the B tree node in memory and uh, as many as it can. Uh, so there is a case that if, if the incoming request, the speed of the incoming request is faster than the speed of the B cache to reclaim its internal dirty cache, there will be more and more pages occupied by, in, by the B cache internal cache. Yeah. In case the, the, the IO is very heavy, normally it won't be happen because it's SSD. Okay, forget that. Uh, normally, it, it won't be happen because it's SSD, but for very powerful uh, server, for example, my, my testing uh, server, uh, there are 48 CPU core. So I run uh, around, uh, around 100 uh, IO processor, or what that. And uh, uh, in this case, just uh, uh, the, the IOPS, should can be around uh, 250,000. Yeah, the, the IOPS can be 250,000. That, that's quite quite high. For key, uh, yeah, for key. So that, that, that's quite high. Uh, in this case, I can observe overnight, the internal cache occupied occupy can be from uh, 30, 30 some gigabytes to uh, 90, 96 gigabyte. And then, and then the any, any memory consumption from a user space, it's very easy to trick the out of memory. Indeed, indeed, the, 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 the B plus tree node is already optimized enough. Yeah. Because uh, each tree node is around 512 kilobytes. It's quite large. And uh, in, inside each node, it may contain around uh, 20, 21,000 keys. That means uh, after read one node in, uh, this node can contain 21,000 uh, keys to index whether the cache is, uh, is dirty or not dirty or is uh, cached in the SSD or not. But, but if the IO is really high, 
such optimized the bcache node can still contain a lot of uh, memory. I have a question. Oh, so early. Yeah, please. Yes. <laughs> uh, so if I understand well, the, the cache is per block, per 4K block. You're, you're caching and indexing in your, in your metadata. Uh, no. Uh, that's a key. That's well, a key. A key is an LB of what you cached on the SSD mm -hmm. for the backend device, yeah. right? Yeah, th and the, the but that's per 4K block. No, uh, the, the cache, the block can be from uh, one sector to four megabyte. Okay. It, that's a so it's a cache of objects, not of LBAs uh, for the backend device. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the, the cached pages are allocated as uh, anonymous pages and uh, not managed by the system MM code. So a B plus tree node is indexed in a, a red, red uh, black tree. When the B plus tree node needs to load from the cache device, uh, just allocate it uh, internal cache object and uh, read the B, tree, uh, B plus tree node from the SSD into it. Also, uh, if the speed of the the, B, uh, the speed of reclaim the cache is faster enough than the new I/O comes, then the 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 internal cache the object can be reused. Can be, so that won't be a problem. That's okay. Everything is okay. Uh, if no clean object can be used, uh, just uh, flush, flush the dirty. Uh, pages of the B-tree node, and then reclaim it and use it for the new coming uh, BK request. Uh, for my test, yeah. For my test, if if the I/O is fast enough, it's around uh, uh, one hundred thousand to twenty hundred thousand. And uh, overnight, I will observe uh, out of memory. Uh, the, the behavior of the out of memory is uh, the I/O processor, because I/O processor uh, simul uh, simulates the database. Their uh, I/O buffer is locked. Uh, use the M lock and the locked, and uh, they just send the data into the bcache code. Obviously, this kind of mm -hmm, I, I, how to close it. Okay, I don't use it. Mm. Okay. Obviously, this kind of uh, process will be very easy to be selected to queue, but they cannot be queued because uh, they are tracked into the bcache code. Uh, maybe the the in the status of interrupt uh, uninterrupted sleep or the, the busy waiting so on some kind of co uh, locks. So they are not able to be queued. And then more and more I.O. processor to be selected uh, to queue and they, they, they cannot be queued. Uh, I just uh, observe a lot of locks rolling up in my terminal and suddenly psh, the CPU reset and the, 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 the machine reboot in silence. Uh, so, this problem won't be observed before Linux kernel uh, version 5.2, because before the after 5.3, most of the easy bugs to trick the bcache deadlock panic are fixed, <laughs> and then we have chance to observe it out of memory. Before that, uh, the bcache code cannot survive more than four hours on this machine. <laughs> yeah, if you check the, the, the uh, 5.3 kernel, you, you, you can find how many fixes. And even uh, since uh, four, seven, I think more than 100, maybe 200, more than, at least more than 100 uh, bucks fixed up to 5.3. Uh -huh. Let me check. Uh, oh, okay. I just look at it this way. Uh, 
Yeah. Also, a Bcache provide a memory shrink interface uh, and a ready state. So if a memory is low, there is chance that the shrinker interface is caught. And I, I also observed that it is caught very frequently. Uh, I, I see that it can be called uh, 200,000 times every second. Uh, but the problem, the problem is the the speed to reclaim the, the, the dirty caches is far slower than the speed that the new I/O comes. Yeah, so we can just observe the, the internal cache slowly increased, increased. If I recall correctly how the Bcache works, it has operating modi that would allow you to go to write through. So if that rate happens, is it possible for you to to stop caching writes and go into an emergency mode right into the backing store only? Uh, that's possible. That's possible. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a that's a good uh, workaround, but uh, I'm looking for for a way to just fix it. Yeah. Uh, In the end of the day, it looks like a quality of service problem. So, if there's too much I/O coming in, why can't you ju just throttle the I/O? Good. That will introduce unpredictable I/O latency. Ah, right. Uh, the the problem is not fast or slow. It's unpredictable. That 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 that's the problem. Yeah, uh, that that's the why. That's the reason why. Why Fusion IO does not survive in other internet company, because their IO is the latency of the IO is not predictable when the memory consumption is very high. So uh, I tried several method to fix it, all failed. Uh, one is uh, I try to predict whether the system memory is low. If it is low, I can proactively reclaim the internal caches before the OM coming. But it turns out when I find the memory is low, it's already very low. So no chance to do that. The second problem is how can I uh, see the, the memory is low? Uh, maybe Bcache consume a lot of memory. And also user space can lock a lot of memory. It, it, it's hard to say right now there's no system memory to use. I need to proactively reclaim. But I, I, I don't know how they see that. So finally, I, I, I only find one method can make the system survive from this kind of uh, situation. That is, uh, I just uh, return uh, if the memory is low and I receive uh, more than 20,000 <coughs> times to call the shrinker, more than 20,000 times per second, I directly return the block status resource to set that in a BIO. And then up layer, we'll find it in the error code that's E no mem. Uh, and then in this case, the system can survive. But the problem is, the problem is, application does not check it. App application just think that's an IO error and the return, finished. Uh, similar things will happen in the file system. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So a solution for this, and back to the previous point. Uh, once you reach a certain rate of, of memory uh, reclaim being asked for, just completely bypass the cache for everything. Go to the backend device, and use that time to reclaim memory from from your B3 cache and 
you, you will get slower performance because you're hitting, for all IOs, you're hitting the backend device, but you do not fail any IO. Uh, that's another suggestion, and yeah, yeah. By the way, if you uh, uh, hit that, that um, case where you, you start running out of memory, it's probably because you're pounding your device way too hard anyway, so the latency for all the IOs on the host queue is going to be huge anyway. So there is already most likely uh, a perception by the user of a system slowdown because you're just running out of, of bandwidth from your device or IOPS from a device. It's not serving IOs fast enough. Okay. So uh, you uh, could uh, just bypass the cache use the, you and, and hit the backend device uh, directly. And, and reclaim resources to, to restore kind of a yeah, same I, I, situation. I, I feel it's a smart suggestion, please. It's a smart suggestion, very smart. Yeah. Not very smart, but the, 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 I mean, the comparing to my man, the very smart, I spend one month to think about it and no result, no solution. Yeah, please. So I'm, I'm confused about one thing. So when you get into this kind of scenario, um, what portion of pages could potentially be reclaimed by basically just discarding them. Are, are you saying that all of those, uh, all those pages in the cache, you really need them around because they have been modified compared to what you actually have in the, in the back in SSD? Yeah, yeah. So that's the, that's the scenario. Everything that you have uh, in the cache is basically dirty. Uh, let me explain. For, for, for the clean keys, if, if the B cache node uh, always contain a clean keys. It can be just discard directly. But uh, for the right operations, uh, the pages are dirty, so I need to r flush it to the SSD, and then it can be uh, re reused. So that's slow. Okay. So the, okay. Thanks. That's the same as a processing node that fork forks the system Yeah, but. The people don't require too much for file system latency on but SSD. But SSD, yeah. but the, for me that, if people observe the latency curse uh, change a lot, they complain. Yeah, that's what I call yeah. yeah, and they, 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 they complain more they, if you get an they, 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 they think that's a bug. <laughs> okay, I can't say that to people who pay us. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. Have you tried limiting the, the share of, of dirty D, uh, B, B3 pages in the... What? Uh, <coughs> no, no, because I don't know how to set the limitation. The memory is compete between the uh, uh, kernel and the USB, so I don't know how to set the the, the yeah. threshold. Yeah, I, I believe that one thing. I believe that you are fighting mostly because you are trying to fix the problem at the wrong layer. It's uh, not trying to find out whether you are low on the memory. It's basically, as others said, the very same problem that a file system has with the write back. That's nothing really new. And at a certain moment, you just have to throttle your I.O. to the speed of reclaim. Without that, you are not going to move forward. You are just going to hit walls from left and right. So what you actually need is once you are hitting a moment where you have a lot of dirty data in your cache, you have to throttle all new incoming IOs to the speed of the reclaim, flushing those pages out to the end device. And there are several methods to do that. Look at how, for example, XFS does that. They have some pretty elaborate ways to, to do that, mostly using logs to synchronize at certain moments that allocation is taken a log while Flushing takes the, s the same lock, so find an inspiration there. Don't try to check proactively or be try to be clever at the wrong player. 
that. That would be <laughs> something that uh, would be my suggestion. Yeah, yeah. This is a solved problem. Yeah. Uh, by the way, largely yeah. solved problem. Yeah. By the way, that uh, if if uh, indeed uh, I, I discussed the way uh, Michelle that uh, there might be another uh, method that if the I/O processor is uh, selected and uh, killed by the out of memory killer. So uh, this current task should be some pending signal. And uh, if I find uh, a processor, uh, the, the, the task sending the request in, which has a pending signal, I just return a, a status that directly rejected the BIO and uh, cited the BI status like uh, no such flag. I mean, maybe uh, block status interrupt. And then the file system will receive a e enter. That means uh, you have a signal to handle. So I, I won't serve you. Uh, yeah, but the, the, the question is, uh, does it work for file system? No, that's correct. So your query doesn't have a source of memory. Ah. Uh, what I worry is uh, metadata I.O. If the metadata I.O. failed, it, I mean, if there is error returned for metadata I.O., what will happen? So what, what uh, Mikhail, Michael, yeah, was saying um, about finding inspiration in other places, there are two places. I'm not a kernel person, so some of my comments may be somewhat naive, but an obvious one is LVM cache or DM cache. They already have a system which does write back, write through. They may have a solution to this that could be a place to look at because that seems really similar to your problem domain and your problem space. Another problem, another area you could look that's somewhat out of band though, is looking at something like PostgreSQL. They have to be able to handle a large transaction set that is still dirty but uncommitted to disk and not complete, yet still requires strong consistency guarantees around making sure that every part of that is actually committed and in certain orders and things like that. So they also will have handled this problem where you're dealing with terabyte or your massive databases that are much bigger than your RAM and you're updating large amounts, but you have to deal with writing that out and, and handling that. So those are probably some places you could draw inspiration from to solve the problem that you have at hand. Like yeah, the, well that's the thing, is that they're handling it in a very different way, but they still may have the same kind of thing where they're saying, okay, you know, when do we start flushing out things to the file? Like they're, they're looking at it in a different way, and that's why I said, you know, they've probably got a different strategy, but it's still gonna have different ideas on how you say, here is my working set, which is like, you know, 500 gig, I've got, 20 gig of RAM, we can't hold all that in memory before we start writing that out. When do we start writing that out? How do we handle it? How do we deal with the transactionality of it? These are still things that you know matter in this circumstance. So you know, possible places to get inspiration from. Yeah, the, the point is the, the current approach is just like the best side, best side you could do for block IOs. Then you you would have talked in well, the DM cache of some things to blocker has write back stuff into. So basically, yeah, the yeah, but the, the Oh, absolutely, yeah, there are definitely lots of places, but most databases will hold the working set in memory before you start flushing it to the file cache and before you start calling fsync to make sure it's out. So so they've got multiple levels of shenanigans going on, basically, so. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> Jan. Uh, I just, uh, okay. Jan, is it, it possible, is it possible for our system people to check the BI status? So, you're exposing a block device. Block device, so if you think of the real device, if it's a real device starts returning you high or error, it's basically a dead device. Uh, but That's the assumption that file system works on. Yeah, but... So you don't take risk. But, uh, but the error code, error code, I mean... Yeah. Across 
Oh, yeah, 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 for page I.O. Yeah. So I, I think you shouldn't focus on what to do in case of the OOM. I think the OOM shouldn't be happening in the first place because it shouldn't happen due to too much I.O. OOM is when the user space wants too much memory and cannot fit. But I, I can only so 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 the the problem how I view it is not that is that actually the cache is growing over limits yeah. so as Cole said like he is getting pretty pretty big amount of shrinker calls just he is not able to reclaim enough memory in these shrinker calls and that's the problem he has to be able to reclaim more now. I suppose, and I'm not sure this is true, but I suppose that he cannot reclaim enough because he has he has too many dirty objects. That's the same problem as page cache has. If you have too many dirty pages, page reclaim is too slow and the machine will get out of memory. That's why we limit like the amount of dirty pages in page cache to 20%. So we don't allow more than 20% of pages to be dirty. So if you don't allow more than 20% of your B3 nodes to be dirty and you just let the user wait until page cache is cleaned, yes, you will have high latency spikes for your users, but then like that's the way how you throttle the dirtiness and you are always able to guarantee that you have enough uh, enough of stuff to reclaim, to, to respond yeah, yeah. to the memory pressure. Let, let me explain. <laughs> the, 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 the problem is user space application can occupy a lot of memory, even more than, I mean, uh, if user space memory uh, occupy more than 20, 80 percent uh, memory, it's okay. Because we won't never exceed the limitation. But if the user space only occupied, for example, 50 hundred, and the limitation of the B cache is uh, 20 hundred, so th there are 30 hundred percent memory is free. So that's why I said, uh, so, so that's why page cache actually limits to percentage. So, so the size of the cache can be basically arbitrary. You don't limit the size in absolute terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You limit just the percentage of dirty nodes. Yeah. So, so the, your, your cache can grow to fill most of the dirty memory, uh, to mo most of the free memory, just in case there is memory pressure, your shrinker is getting called, and you have plenty of free nodes to reclaim from. And these are, you c these you can reclaim like this. Yeah, you can reclaim this immediately. You just call free, and you get away, get rid of these nodes, and memory is free, and there is no need to gr trigger OOM. Memory allocations can yeah, make yeah, progress. Yeah. Yes, but this uh, this assumes that we have free nodes. That, that's the point. You set the limit on the amount of free nodes. That assumes you have free nodes, and that assumes that all nodes will always be available. If you have a cache, the over size of the cache will grow and shrink. I mean, that's the whole point of yes. our thing. So free, meaning non-dirty nodes, will be deleted completely. They won't be in the cache. Yes. So, yes. Yes. right, the percentage will always 100, because all dirty nodes will in, get in the cache. Well, so, so if the memory- will not be in the cache. So, so it depends, no, 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 no. So that's the same thing how it works with page cache. Yes. So also with page cache, we are reclaiming the pages which are clean. You know, these are f fast to reclaim. So, uh, but, so it, like, of course the percentage will go up because you reclaim the clean pages yeah. and you will, like the dirty pages will stay much longer before they can be written out. But then you are uh, throttling everybody who is dirty, like because you notice that the percentage of the dirty pages is now high, you basically th throttle anybody who tries to dirty anything and they have to wait until you clean the pages enough so that you are again on the given percentage tar target. So basically you block all the dirtiest, let them wait in the kernel until you are able to clean enough of the cache. Okay, so. That's, that's the way how page cache prevents exactly the same problems. Okay, so it seems like the, the filter is uh, unavoidable. The yeah, so, so yes. I, I actually think that the blocking sometimes is simply unavoidable. You just have to decide when and like this is relatively proved model how to do it. Like throttle the writer at the moment the amount of dirtiness exceeds given percentage. So that you are basically sure that you still have 
enough clean nodes to reclaim from. Okay. And you can actually express this by the number of calls to the shrinker being having received. Okay, okay. Because that would give you a good indicator, right, how urgent is the pressure. Okay, okay. Uh, the other problem we're having is trying to figure out how much free memory do we ab actually have. Well, Can you should allocate the, 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 the job for a memory management subsystem, yeah? So memory management subsystem calls you the shrinker with the amount you should scan. And, like, you should simply fulfill this request. That's the requirement of MM. That's the requirement from MM, and the, like, subsystem should just fulfill it and don't ask questions. <laughs> ah, okay. So, basically, so the problem is that we are using the shrinker incorrectly. We should free amount. Uh, we should free that amount which is given in the argument to the shrinker. So, so how does the shrinker? How we work? do it is completely beside the point. But it's not an option to free less memory than well, being is an instructed. Option, but you shouldn't like do too much difference. Yeah. So, how does the shrinker work? If it finds only dirty memory, does it block <coughs> until it's written or just as Still right, right, right now I find uh, the, the, the memory management code just send uh, to, to, to free one. Uh, maybe one, one. So you're one. Uh, essentially you are just uh, breaking an in inherent assumption that we put into Shrinker that if you cannot make a forward progress, you might throttle at that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that throttling will okay, give right, enough yeah, space yeah. for for your write back to finish and allow to free some more memory. Yeah, but I, I find that even the, there are a lot of uh, free memory, the, the shrinker also get caught. Um, as long as there is case will be running in the background, then shrinkers are called. You can distinguish those two cases, whether you are in a direct uh, reclaim context or in case will be by checking which contacts are call called from. Okay. Yeah, like generally, if you are called from direct reclaim, you should use memory management over, over the hash distance. So you should really try hard to reclaim. We already struggle when there is a direct reclaim. Okay, okay. So, so that's a flag that this should be off, like I should really try hard to do the reclaim. Uh, so start throttling when it's, it's start throttling when there's a direct re reclaim. But start throttling where when your shrinker gets called from direct reclaim because if your okay. if your shrinker uh, gets called from direct reclaim it really means that memory management was not able to fulfill yeah, yeah, yeah. the allocation request by freeing in the yeah. background and it has to block all people doing allocations to actually waiting for okay. you to reclaim memory. So if there is a flag, I can check. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and file systems actually do this. Like, for example, XFS does does exactly ju the check. Like, there is like current if case will be the function or okay. something like this. Okay. So check yeah, if and it really have the XFS a code. It should yeah. have the okay. Yeah, XFS code already does that. Uh, they are shrinking from uh, worker contexts, or uh, they have really a complex uh, method to do that. But essentially, they are throttling direct reclaim when they really need to do some work in the background. Which then means, if you just think about that more, that uh, OM killer only happens after we basically use all those methods to uh, reclaim some memory. If you just don't block at your shrinker, which is the only one to free memory, then we just go to OM killer too early. If you just stop right there and finish the work that it's to be done, you just don't have enough throughput or whatever is other limitation, which is probably the speed of the I.O., then just throttle to the speed of I.O. Okay. Okay. I, I think I, I, I have enough hint. Thank you all. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs>